الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين وطبيب نفوسنا أبا القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد لا سيما بغية الله في الأرضين روحي وأرواح العالمين له الفداء واللعن الدائم على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لعلك باخ نفسك على آثارهم إن لم يؤمنوا بهذا الحديث أسفا صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله الأمين recite the second salawat louder please اللهم صل على محمد So by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his blessings and his altaf upon us, we already have finished after almost 12 nights the introduction of our main discussion. So the introduction in the introduction to the main discussion took us some 12 nights to be covered. I don't know what about the main discussion. I will how long is it going to take our time? But then, of course, that introduction was very important. Uh, and then I had to already uh, found the, the whole structure and construction over a good foundation so that when we refer to this specific main talk, so previously, you know what the reason is behind it. So, <clears throat> the main discussion that will, inshallah, start tonight and that will continue afterward, by grace of God, inshallah, uh, would be a kind of reference to the uh, merits, to the characteristics, to the descriptions of Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam starting from Holy Prophet Muhammad himself. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ala So based on a very common dua that every uh, Tuesday night we're used to reciting this dua as well. So what kind of dua is this? Brother, dua tawassul. Khawjad Dave wants to know that. Yeah, dua tawassul um, is something that we weekly recite and read on Tuesday night and then based on it I want to clarify more the description of 14 infallible ma'sumin uh, and Ahlul Bayt inshallah this is what I want to do I don't know if we are able to cover all 14 but then we do our best in order to cover most of the people that they have been mentioned in this dua tabassum like that, so this dua and this supplication will start describing Ahlul Bayt one after another and then also seeking the intercession from one after another. So, for example, the way that we start dua tawassul, Allahumma inni as'aluka wa atawajjahu ilayka bi nabiyyika nabiyya rahma. And then it continues, Ya Abu al Qasime, uh, Ya. Yes, no, there is something behind, um, before the Ya Abel Ghasib, Ya Imam al Rahma, something I didn't memorize it, sorry. Uh, so there is Nabi al Rahma, and then also the same attribute has been related to Holy Prophet saying that Imam al Rahma. So both of them have been mentioned. So right now I just forgot the priority, I mean, the, that kind of time was uh, sequential uh, descriptions, one after each other. So <clears throat> one of the main attributes. Related to Holy Prophet is both Nabi al Rahma and then Imam al Rahma. Okay. And then Ya Abal Qasim, Ya Rasulullah, and then continues. Okay. Why Holy Prophet has been described? Yes, go ahead, Dr. Nabi al Rahma, and then afterward? Ya Rahma. So both of them. 
So, Ya Abul Ghassami, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Imam al Rahma, and then. So, <coughs> we do have both Nabi al Rahma and Imam al Rahma. Why a Holy Prophet has been described in this way, in this specific sensitive dua and supplication? What is b behind it? And then we want to, inshallah, delve into the explanation of this Imam al Rahma, or Rahma itself. What is it so that the Holy Prophet has been called as the Imam al Rahma, the leader of? kindness and compassion and then mercy so this is actually what we want to do inshallah we try our best in order to describe so that we will recognize and we will identify and realize the value of Ahlul Bayt more I mean this dua will help us at least understand them um, in a very crystal clear image so that at the end of the day we would be benefited by this dua having a good understanding of the personalities of Ahlul Bayt salam. So this would not be only the mere of recitation of this dua, but then each time that we are going to pass over the lines of this dua, we would remind some of the discussions that already we are going to discuss so that we will understand the reasons behind the descriptions of Ahlul Bayt in this specific manner. So a dua tawassul by itself, you know that, well, this is not a specific title for a very unique du'a. We do have mainly and generally four different versions that all together they have been called as du'a al-tawassul. So we don't have only one, like du'a al-kumail, like for example du'a al nudbe there is a specific du'a and then it has been called after this name of course, like du'a al-kumail, like du'a al-tawassul. No, this is not the case. We do have four main versions of the same du'a al-tawassul. The, the most famous of which is what we are reciting and what has been mentioned in Mafatihul Jinan. But then even Mirza al Qumi himself has narrated this dua from Bihar al Anwar of Allama Majlisi. So already this specific dua has been indicated in the, the collection, we can say one of the biggest collections of Ahadith. That has been titled as Bihar al Anwar. More, more than 100, sometimes more, more than 120 volumes. So this dua has been mentioned in that specific of Bihar al Anwar. We do have also other versions that has been mentioned and stated and quoted at the same time, we can say, in um, the book uh, written by Kaf Ami, of course, Balad al Amin. So we do have also two other versions of the same, or oh, um, differences, of course, of, of dua. They are sometimes totally different and then have been called also as du'a tawassul, or maybe to some specific extent, they are a little bit different. <coughs> there are some discussions also regarding du'a tawassul. I don't want to delve into it, but then it is also good for you to refer to it maybe personally, so I cannot just shed light on those uh, discussions here in public, but then if you're interested more, you can go and read uh, and then research about us. So maybe if you have got a question regarding Dua Tabasa, I will let you know more. But in total, Imam al Rahma or Nabi al Rahma is not only specified to Holy Prophet in Dua Tabasa, we do have also in other Duas as well. Like, for example, if you go and open the book Sahih Sajjadiyah, the second Dua, so the Sahih Sajjadiyah is called uh, 5254. Of course, Duas number two, the second Dua and supplication is exactly prescribing Holy Prophet with the same characteristic, Imam al rahma So the phrase is this, Imam al rahmati wa qa'id al-khayri wa miftah al So Imam al rahma again, so we do have the, the leader of mercy, and then qa'id al khair means the, of course again we can say the, the leader, so if we just translate the previous to be the Imam, maybe the better, of course, translation would be. And then Qa'id al-Khayr means the leader of goodness. And then at the end, Miftah al-Barakah means the key to the blessing and bounty of God. So <coughs> this is not only specific in Dua Tawassul, so we do have also this characteristic in other Duas and supplications as well. What is Rahmah itself? So there are different dictionaries regarding the, the definition of Rahma. So if you just reflect and concentrate over the concept of Rahma, of course you will have a, uh, at least 
a very well-defined description of the word rahmah in your mind. When you say that the person is rahim, when you say that, for example, God is rahman, when you say that this person is kind, he is passionate, he is compassion, he is merciful. So what kind of definition will come to your mind? What does it mean? So basically there are two main elements that we can uh, assume a person to be kind. First is that about kind of رِقَّةٌ فِي الْقَالْبِ So he should be compassionate in his heart or in her heart. So much so that for example we'll call a person to be uh, kind uh, as far as he or she is to be affected by a simple for example incidences. Okay. So sometimes, for example, we find, like, um, I've gone this month, uh, w just one time, for, uh, well, inspecting the halal meat. And then uh, I haven't been into it for so long. I haven't seen this, slot slot slaughtering the animals. And then, uh, well, it affected me in the beginning, of course. So that kind of affection, that kind of, um, influence over our heart will, of course, is one of the fundamental keys for being compassion. Okay, uh, and then that is good. Uh, I, I can say so many times, being affected and having affection in our heart is very useful for us. That is why I think, maybe, um, why to be butcher is discouraged highly in Islam. Maybe because at the end of the day you will lose this kind of affection of the heart. This is, it will be something normal to you. So that you will find and you will see some uh, grieves of the people. And then you are not affected that much. Just out of your job that already you are doing. That affection is something that matters to Islam. So it means Islam will think about the compassionate hearts. This is very important. Okay. So even the jobs that you want to go through. Even the jobs that you want to do. Should not make you very hard, very, sometimes very rough and tough, that you are not to be affected simply. So that um, affection is needed. And then later on, we'll talk about it. What are the outcomes and consequences of this affection as well? A person who's got this affection can also, can also easily cry. And then what are the consequences of the cry for, of course, different figures, important figures, in Islam, of course, very clear as well. We do have so many ahadis in this respect. Um, so, and then this is the first element. The second element is ihsan. So you have to come up with good deeds to others. So these are actually two elements for a person to be called as a kind, as compassion. Okay, so if I'm a kind person, means that already I have to have an affection in my heart, and second, I have to do good to people. Okay. Now, the question is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is the prime example for Rahman, for the Rahma, let's say, of course. And then different derivations of the symbol has been attributed to Holy Prophet himself. Like the way that we start... Uh, our recitation of Holy Quran, always we use this uh, famous expression, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, so ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. They are exactly the derivations of the same origin, which is Rahma. So what is Rahman and what is Rahim? So Rahman is, of, well, interpreters of Quran, they have explained Rahman to be the comprehensive Rahma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means it is inclusive of all people, all slaves, all servants to God. Whether they are good or they are bad. Whether they are atheists or they are theists. Whether they are polytheists or they are agnostics. So it doesn't make any difference between different groups of the people. The Rahma, Rahmani of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inclusive of all people. That is why it has been mentioned in some ahadiths. It is, be it is better for you not to call any person as Rahman. So it is better not to call, for example, your children as to Rahman. Because it is the very unique adjective only for God. Although in my country back home, we do have many people.
people to be called as Rahman. But it is better not to do it. Because we do not have any person other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have that inclusive Rahma over all creatures in the universe. How we open this phrase in Dua al Kumaid? Ya man wasa'at rahmatuhu kull shay. So this is exactly referring to the Rahmania of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His blessing, His mercy is comprising, let's say, and then including all creatures. So we do not have any kind person whose mercifulness, whose compassion is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then Rahim has been interpreted and has been explained to be inclusive of the good doers. And that is why it has been uh, formed in, a, they call it as Sifatul Mushabbaha in Arabic. So Sifatul Mushabbaha in Arabic is a kind of description that is permanent. Okay? That is not okay. One day I'm compassionate to you, another day I'm not compassionate to you. I'm always compassionate to you. So the Rahman is inclusive of the people and individuals, but then Rahim is inclusive of the times, I can say. So Rahman means inclusive of all people, Rahim means inclusive of all times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always for all people Rahman and Rahim. So, so this discussion will start here and then now we do have some ahadith even that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that I have created mercy and Rahmah and I have created you addressing Rahmah even in the, the language of the ahadith. I have created you addressing the Rahmah and then you're from me. You've been originated already from me. Means I'm Rahman and the Rahmah has been originated from me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. So whoever else is called as kind, actually, and the, the basic and the genuine form of that mercy, of that compassion should be found in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The most and the perfect level of that mercy. So let's now refer to Holy Prophet. Now I want, you, I want to draw your attention to different verses of Holy Quran that Holy Prophet has been described as the clear example of a kind and a merciful being and prophet. Recite the salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadan. The first verse of Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in chapter cap verse number six. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La'allaka ba'cha'un nafsaka ala atharihim. This is ex exactly what I recited in the beginning. La'allaka ba'cha'un nafsaka ala atharihim. Means you're about to imperil yourself. You're about to endanger your life. You're about to, even we can say, kill yourself. What for? Ala atharihim. So, ala athar. So, athar. Uh, I'm just right now passing you what I have been learned from, of course, my dear teachers here. Astaghfirullah, you are all uh, the, the people of letter, let's say. So, athar in Arabic means that there is a footprints of a person's in the floor that you will find he has been going, for example. He's even been walking away from you. So, the athar is to be shown. You, are, you will see the athar of the person in the ground. So, athar means already that the people, they have turned their face and they are just going to be away from you. So that is a kind of uh, we can symbolic expression of people face, I mean, turning their face from you. Atharahim means you are about to kill yourself because already people, they have turned their faces from you. They don't listen to you. They don't welcome you. They don't understand your message. Because they do not already believe this kind of discourse and dialogue. What is this hadith? Mostly this is Quran. It means they don't listen to Quran and your words. Asafa. So you are about to kill yourself out of the grief that you have in your heart. So can we, can we say that it is, this is something other than the mercy and the compassion of Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is so much 
let's say, concern about, he's full of concern about people that nothing like this happened to believers. You should not go away, not just for my sake, but for your own sake. Okay? So it shows already that like a mother thinking about her children to protect them, not for her own sake, but for the sake of their children and her children. So this is actually what we'll find. This is one example of the mercy of Holy Prophet Muhammad Wasallam that he was so, let's say, greedy for the guidance of the people. That every simple individual should come to the right path, should not neglect the right path, should be covered by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I have come up with, Holy Prophet has come up with. The second verse, in chapter Tawbah, verse 128, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim laqad ja'akum rasoolun min anfusikum azizun alayhi ma'anittum harisun alaykum bil mu'minina ra'ufun rahim So here there is another version of the same story about Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam that has been described in Holy Quran by different verses that he is so compassionate about people to come to the right path so a prophet, a messenger, an apostle has come from amongst you. Azizun alayhi ma'anitum. So it is very grievous, of course, your distress. So he cannot tolerate your distress. He cannot tolerate your hardships and difficulties to see that you're under grief, that you are suffering. Harisun alaykum. He is so many concerns about you. Now he cares about you. And then this is very important psychologically speaking. Sometimes you want other people to just think about you. Sometimes if you want to talk a friend of yours, you're not looking for a solution from him or her. But then the only thing that you're looking for is their attention toward you, that they care about you that they give importance to you. This is actually what sometimes matters to so many children of the community, to so many, for example, people of the community. And then, rahim, And then for the believers, he is compassionate, he is merciful. So Rahim here, surprisingly, the description that has been prescribed and has been, of course, attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, the same has been attributed to his messenger. So both are Rahim. So what was the translation of Rahim, the way that I described already to you? Rahim means always there are compassionate. Not, for example, one time or another time, not one day I'm in mood to be compassionate, when tomorrow I'm not in mood, something happened, for example, last night to me, and then today I will get up, I'm a little bit, you know, aggressive. And sometimes we just, I don't know, sometimes, I don't know if you have come across that kind of feeling in your life, having just personal experience about, about that. Some morning, automatically, without any specific reason, you will get up from the bed and you feel that you're not in mood to be kind. Sometimes I want to be harsh. I don't know what just happened, but I'm moody sometimes, okay? So in the morning, I will get up from the bed and I think that, no, I, I have to just, I don't know, astaghfirullah, insult someone. I have to be aggressive to my wife. I have to say something so that to relieve myself. But then for Holy Prophet, this is not the story. For him, every day is like yesterday. It's compassionate. So, and then there are so many examples of the mercy of Holy Prophet. And I, I will let you know, inshallah, maybe in some other sessions. So, and then we do have also the last verse that I want to tell you. This is of course a very clear example. Supporting and buttressing the statement that already I'm trying to explain to you. And then the way the literature of this verse is fantastic. We haven't sent you. Okay, we haven't sent you. And then there is an exception bringing about after a general negative sentence that will bring about a kind of a specific characteristic for afterward. means we haven't seen you, but to be 
a mercy for alameen for the whole world not w just this world alameen and then there are so many explanations regarding alameen different worlds what are these different worlds maybe different generations inshallah we'll talk about this more it needs of course more uh, address here to be covered inshallah thank you very much for your patience i'm sorry for that i'm always late ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the reappearance of our truth Imam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa alihi al-tahirin. Allahumma